Okay guys, we are talking about the pulmonology. Now we are going to talk about the breathing patterns. So this is not the pathology of the breathing and the rhythm, breathing rhythms. Instead, this is really to identify various patterns that you can use. So this is a, a lecture that is going with physiology. So first of all, apneostic breathing. What that means is it is a breathing in which, so let's see for a second, let's say this is pons and this is medulla. Remember that in the dorsal medulla there is respiratory center. So this is the respiratory, respiratory center in medulla. This center is receiving impulses from pons pneumotaxic center, pneumotaxic center and it also receives impulses from lower pons apneostic center. So there are center here apneostic center. Now what happens is the type of um, inspiration that you would see here or the type of breathing that you would see here is this. You would see deep inspiration, then a shallow expiration followed by other deep inspiration and then deep and prolonged and then shallow expiration. So this time between, for time taken for one inspiration can be from 30 to 90 seconds and the, the expiration time is really short. So what would happen is you will see the patient doing this. So that is the apneostic breathing. What happens is it is normally because of the damage to the lower part of the pons. Why is that? Because the apneostic center's function is to switch off the inspiration. Sorry, to switch off, not the inspiration, to switch off the pneumotaxic message that switches off the inspiration. So inspiration would be stopped by this pneumotaxic center. Now what happens is apneostic center overrides the switch off of the inspiration. So it prolongs the inspiration. For example, if you decided to take a long deep breath, your apneostic center is going to tell the medulla not to listen to the pneumotaxic center and switch off the inspiration. So you can continue going, ah, oh, it is so fun breath, right? So that is what happened with the apneostic center's activity. Now when there is a caudal medulla damage then this center can start becoming irritated and active and that would cause this kind of apneostic breathing. Then is a Shane Stoke breathing. Shane Stoke breathing, here is a pattern. What happens is there is a there is a apnea, there is a gap where there is no breathing. Then slowly the breathing increases, tidal volume increases then it starts reducing again till it reaches another phase of apnea. Then the same cycle starts again. So this is what it is. So there is apnea, no breathing and you, you are now wondering, oh man, this, this person is not breathing and then all of a sudden the breathing is going to start and the tidal volume, the depth of breathing would continue increasing like this and then the depth of breathing would start st would start reducing and then stopped apnea again this breathing pattern is seen in head injury it is seen in heart failure it is seen normally in infants it is also seen normally in sleeping people so don't take it always that this would be the injury but normally sleeping people have it or infants have it other than that there is some pathology that is causing it. Now let us look at the biot ataxic breathing. So as B and A they go together so remember it that way. What this is is this the tidal volume is normal. If the person is going to have 500 milliliter of tidal volume that is what it is but there are irregular patterns of 
apnea. So this is the tidal volume. Imagine they are all the same. Any error in the height and that is because of my... And then all of a sudden there is apnea. Then another few breaths, there is apnea again. Then maybe one breath, apnea again. Then many breaths again and then apnea again. So irregular. So this is why it is called ataxia. That the rhythm is irregular. Apnea, so if you saw that in the Shane stroke, Shane stroke has a very particular rhythm that you can actually observe. Similarly, apneostic uh, abnormality, the rhythm is something that you can observe. Here you are seeing that the rhythm is not constant. However, depth of uh, inspiration and expiration, that is constant. So that is normal. So tidal volume is normal. And then is the Kusmal breathing. Kusmal breathing, first let me say, here is let's say normal tidal breathing of a person, 500 milliliter, right? Inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expiration. So this is normal. If you exaggerate this, make it labored and heavy, this is normally in the diabetic ketoacidosis. This is head injury, especially in the uh, brain stem area. So diabetic ketoacidosis, if you do that, then what happens is, if you superimpose labored, labored breathing. Like this. So that is a continuous breathing. But a patient may be actually unconscious as well at that time. So diabetic, diabetic ketoacidosis can cause Kusmal breathing, which is labored and heavy breathing. So these are the various breathing patterns that you should be aware of while you are doing the physiology. We will do more as we go into the pathology lectures. Thank you.